G'day guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and in today's video the AFL Finals tipping continues a few twists and turns in this final series but in this video I'll be tipping my semi-final predictions going in depth of the game, giving my predictions and many more in this video so you have been enjoying my content consider hitting that subscribe button, it is greatly appreciated we are on the road to getting to 1k and getting monetized on the channel so big things coming soon and yeah, without further ado, let's just get straight into this video Alrighty, but before I do get into my semi-final tips, I thought I'd better go back over quickly and review my round one tips. So starting off, we have Power and Geelong. I tip Geelong by four points. And yeah, I really underestimated Power. No excuses there from me. That is a very poor tip. Uh, but yeah, Port Adelaide underestimated them a lot. Now I see them probably making a grand final and being a strong Premiership contender. Moving on to Swans and Giants. I was every day that this game got closer, I was wanting to change the Giants, but I stuck with my gut and said Sydney. And yeah, they were very unlucky not to win in the end. Five straight points, and I think that like three of them were hit the post. So yeah, Giants uh, really survived the late scare from the Swans with that Toby Green free kick at the end. Moving on to my first correct tip of this round, I tip Melbourne. I wanted to tip Brisbane, I thought, you know, we'll go for a bit of an upset, but I stuck with my gut once again. This time I did pay off. These are too strong down at the Adelaide Oval. And then the last game of the round, I also got this right. I was just, obviously, as a Dogs fan, I was tempted to tip Essendon of how nervous I was. But I wrote the Doggies just to be safe, and they got the job done pretty comfortably in the end. Essendon scoring zero goals in the second half. So, yeah, now we move on to the semi-final predictions. Alrighty, so let's just start it off with the Cats and the Giants at 7.50pm. This is at Optus Stadium. Now, this will be where the grand final will eventually be played later on during September. And this is huge news for Western Australia and for the ground of Optus the stadium. Now, this is the second year in a row without the grand final being played at the G. It just won't feel the same. Still good to get crowds in there, nevertheless, and it's better that it's during the day again, so it's kind of got more of a better feel to the grand final than last year, but still won't be the same until it's back at the MCG with 100,000 there, but nevertheless, let's talk about this game. So we have the Cats and the Giants. Now, being at Optus Stadium, I kind of feel like this will end up helping out Geelong more than it being played at GMHBA, and here's why I reckon. So in the Cats and Giants game, uh, during the regular season, I know the Cats uh, still had some people out, but in that game, they really were stuck in that one back pocket for the majority of the game. And the Giants were really closing in on them. But with this wider ground of the Optus Stadium, I reckon the Cats can kind of get that chipping game going around, getting a lot of kick mark position, how they like it. So I feel like they can kind of open up the Giants' uh, wall, in a sense, going out of their defence. And, and then once Jeremy Cameron and Hawkins get onto the ball, they're going to be so dominant. The Cats, earlier on on the week on Bit of Footy's channel, check that out if you haven't already. I actually tipped Giants, but... I'm going to change my tip to the Cats because in more having a more in-depth look at where this game we played and having a more in-depth look at the matchups, um, yeah, I'm going to have to go to the Cats. And another major reason is the Cats will have Tui back in, Danger's going to stay in, and Toby Green out for three weeks. At the current time, I think the AFL might actually even extend that ban, which is crazy news. I didn't think it would be three weeks at all. I thought it might have been one week at worst or just a fine, but tough news for the Giants. So Toby will be out, and I think no Toby... No GWS, Cats win by, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 23 points. Giants still put up a very strong fight. Cats will just have too much firepower and they'll eventually kind of get their game going and their mojo going. So moving on to the second semi-final, this is a really exciting game for me. I'll be streaming this game on my channel, so make sure to check that out. Yeah, it'll be a big stream for the channel, and so yeah, get excited for that as well. But onto the game, it is at 7.20 p.m. at the Gabba, which is going to be tough for Bulldogs because they're going to have to sit in their hotel room all day so they can finally get to the stadium. And this is going to be very tough for the Dogs, but I still think they put up a really strong fight. Going off of a 49-point win against a very good Essendon side, um, they really got their mojo going in the second half, but had a very slow start, so they cannot do this against Brisbane, but I'm going to go for a huge scalp here. I did this in my initial finals predictions. I'm going to go the Bulldogs by four points. And the reason why I'm going to go the Bulldogs by four points, I feel like Marcus Bonson Pally will step up and have a huge game, getting 30 disposals, two goals, and really lifting in that game. Tom Liberatore in form, McRae's always dominant, and I think Norton is the real X Factor for this game. But if the Brisbane Lions will get up, I feel like the X Factor will be Zach Valley. But I definitely can still see the Brisbane Lions winning. They've got such a fast game style, they're a really good club, they've got really good defenders, like they've got Daniel Rich who can use the ball really well. Got Harris Andrews down there, and yeah, they've just got a really good list. They've got Cameron, the small forward, they've got Joe Danner in, but uh, Hipwood, I feel like they actually play better with Hipwood out, so that I don't know what they're going to do with Hipwood next year. 
But yeah, I'm going to go with Dogs by four points, which is a really big call. But in the end, Brisbane probably will win if the Dogs start off slow. But I feel like the Dogs will finally start off good in a game of footy. And that's a long time since that has happened. But that it is that is my final prediction for this week, folks. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button. Drop a like on this video. And also comment down below who you have winning this week. And that is all. And I'll see you in my next one.